Emperor Rajendra Chola, who was the illustrious son of the King Rajaraja, had anchored the Chola kingdom, on the foundation laid by his father, very strongly. The foundation laid by both Rajaraja, and Rajendra, had lasted for more than 250 years in the medieval period. Rajendra with his father, had it in many maiden wars, before 1014 CE. After having crowned as king on 1014, he participated in many of the battles, which had been classified as three types, as, boundary wars, river Ganges invasion, and overseas invasion. Among the three types, the well-known, and the history never seen war, had been the river Ganges invasion. During the invasion, King Rajendra, is said to have been associated with his commander-in-chief, to some extent only, and thereafter, his commander took over the sole responsibility, on his shoulder, till the end. conquered the Ganges provinces, that is, the northern regions, under his reign, Rajendra Chola ordered the defeated kings, to carry the Ganges filled water pots, with them, upon the 1008 elephants, to his capital. He gave a warm welcome, to his commander in chief, surrounded with his victorious army, by having received them, on the banks of the river Gothavari. This massive victory is said to have been achieved, by his commander-in-chief, by having lined up his war elephants, side by side, like a bridge, on which he crossed the river Ganges. In order to commemorate his great victory, over the northern provinces, he had built a Shiva temple, as like the one, which had been built by his father Rajarajan, at Thanjavur. This place was called as Gunga Konda Silapuram, followed by his victory, over the Ganges near provinces. the city, but also the presiding deity Shiva, has also been called as Lord Bragadishwarar. The city was also called as Gunga Konda Silapuram. The lake he erected, also was called as Silagungum Lake, now been called as Pon Nairi. From these names, one could easily understand how much the Ganges invasion, made an impact over him. He also transferred his capital from Tanjavur, to Gunga Konda Silapuram, after his sixth reignal year, that is, 1020 CE. Gunga Konda Silapuram, once flourished as the capital, now lost all of its glories, except the temple lies at Udayar Palayam Taluk, of Arayalar district. This was trifurcate from the erstwhile, composite trick here of Pali district. Rajendra Sola and his successors, had built a very big palace at Orkatai. 1.5 km away from Gunga Konda Silapuram, where only, the ruined bricks debris, is seen now.
is one of the most important festival of this temple, and it is mainly organized by Shankaracharita of Kanch Kaumukati Pitam. As the presiding deity, Parabudayar, that is, Lingam, is in the type of Rachasa, that is, huge Lingam, it requires 75 gunny bags of rice to completely cover the huge size of the Lingam. The whole Lingam looks like a hill made up of white rice. The Abhishega Prasatham, that is, the rice after offering to Lingam, will be served as Anadhanam, that is, free food to all the devotees, on that day. Navigraha designed as round, where sun at the top, surrounded with other planets. It's an unique feature here. temple is built on an elevated structure, with a courtyard, measuring 560 feet, by 320 feet. Its sanctum measures 100 square feet, and is entered through the Artha Mandopam. The sanctum doorway is flanked, by Dwara Balags, each 6 feet tall. The sanctum contains Bragadishwarar, Shiva, in the form of Lingam. This Lingam, is 13 feet tall and the base has a circumference of 59 feet. There is an image of a seated Nandi, the transcendental carrier, the bull, in the courtyard, aligned axially 660 feet facing the sanctum. There are five shrines around the sanctum, and a lion well, which was added during the 19th century. The temple site, has a monolithic representation of Navigrahas, the nine planetary deities.
Bunny tree is the Sthala Varish Sham, that is, temple tree, of this temple. It's been at the North Prag Haram of the temple, at the side to the Chundi Keshwarar's shrine. Rice is being prepared from the early morning itself, for an abhisayam, means rice abhisayam, to Lord Shiva.
residual bricks debris of the palace are now called as Marlaki Madhu. Most of the successors of Rajendra Chola had crowned and lived here in this palace. On the 13th century, the avenged Pandyas defeated the Chola Empire and destroyed the whole Gunga Konda Silapuram into a heap of brick debris, except the Shiva temple. The inhabitants of the nearby villages used these residual portions of brick debris for their constructing residing places. Now the Brikateshwarar temple only exists in Gunga Konda Silapuram. Hadishwarar Temple is located near the village of Gunga Konda Silapuram, about 280 km southwest of China and 50 km from Stumbaram. Roughly 70 km to the northeast is the similarly named Bruk Hadishwarar Temple in Tanjavur and is about 30 km to the northeast of the Iravathishvara Temple. All these three are UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The temple is on Highway 81, connecting Thirusaropoli and Stumbaram. The nearby city of Stumbaram is connected to other major cities by daily trains, by the Indian Railways, Tamil Nadu bus services, and National Highways 36, 81, and 245. The nearest airport with regular services is Thirusaropoli International Airport, about 120 kilometers away. Though inland, the temple is near the Koli Dam River, within the Kauveri River Delta, with access to the Bay of Bengal, and through which to the Indian Ocean. <laughs>